Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Neustos and the month of June just got a little better, if that was even possible. As yes, some more Xbox Game Pass games were revealed, five more in fact, that will be coming sometime here soon or really even today. There are a few interesting titles here as well, adding to an already good overall month, so we'll go over that here in just a little bit. Also, rumors continue to swirl that PlayStation might be holding a second event for June, this time a speculation coming from one of the most credible insiders out there, so we'll talk about that as well. Before we get started though, go and hit that bell notification, subscribe, and like button below, that way you can keep up to date with all the latest gaming news because I am here every single week, Monday through Friday. With that said though, let's just go and jump right into the news, starting off with Forza Motorsport. So, Xbox in Turn 10 finally revealed Forza 8 at their latest Xbox Bethesda showcase, and to just kind of describe this game, it was quite stunning. It was a real graphical showcase to say the least, but really any time that these demos come out, there's, there's always going to be that level of skepticism on how the final product will look. You know, really there's just been so many misleading game demos made in past showcases, so obviously fans are going to be a little hesitant on what they believe. Understandably so, actually. And in this situation here, one thing that's kind of been thrown into that forefront would be ray tracing. Turn 10, they did unveil ray tracing running in Forza 8, which looks gorgeous. And it really just brings a whole new level of realism to the series that we've yet to see before from a graphical standpoint. But again, because fans have been misled from numerous developers and publishers in the past, most recently Gran Turismo, which claimed to have ray tracing for a very long time, and, well, that turned out to not be the case in gameplay. So, with that, there's been this very real question of what we just witnessed in Forza. Is this ray tracing running in-game, as an example, or is it just in replay like we've seen, again, in something like Gran Turismo? That is a very important question, and, well, Turn 10 did respond by saying this. Ray tracing is here. It's on track, and most importantly, it's real-time gameplay. Really want to make that clear, when we say on track, it doesn't mean it's only in replays or it's only in photo mode on track and we're just being funny with words. We're not trying to mislead you here. When you're racing and when you're playing the game, ray tracing is on. We want to be clear about that. So as you can see here, turn 10, they do claim that ray tracing will be there for gameplay and not just with replays, which is really good to see. Though I think for me, the next question comes down to the performance while ray tracing is enabled. Performance to me, that there is the most important factor. Having that stable 60 frames per second is a must in my opinion. Now VRR, that can kind of fix things up a little bit as long as there's not major dips from 60 frames per second. But all in all, I will be very curious to see what type of performance we'll get with ray tracing enabled for Forza Motorsport. One thing that I do know though is that Turn 10 is incredibly talented and I do expect Forza 8 to be a great game when we do eventually get the chance to play this ourselves next year in 2023. Moving on though, one of the great mysteries of the world is Atlas and, well, their decision making. They just always seem to baffle fans in one way or the other and that was really the case earlier this month when they announced Persona 3, 4, and 5 for the Xbox. They announced it for PlayStation, they also announced it for PC, but again, as you might notice, one platform was left out being the Nintendo Switch. Now, one side, all of this is super exciting, again, for the platforms that was announced, but the absence of the Nintendo Switch port is where it becomes a little head-scratching, to say the least. I mean, here we're talking about a device that is absolutely dominating Japan, and that is a bit of an understatement, and here is a series that would do very well in Japan. So you would think that this would be a no-brainer move. These games would sell very well on the Switch, but again, I mean, this is Atlas that we're talking about here. Who knows when it comes to them? But interestingly enough, over the weekend, a new retailer listing at World of Gaming popped up, allowing pre-orders for Persona 5 Royal on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this listing since has been removed and everything, but this is the internet that we're talking about here, so there's evidence out there that this did actually happen, and this has caused quite a big stir online. Speculation has since run rampant that an incoming port announcement will be made sometime here soon. The way I look at this, though, is that there's a very high chance that this was simply just a mistake. Now, 
I don't want to rule anything out here or anything like that, as I do believe that Persona will eventually be ported over to the Switch, especially Persona 3 and 4. There's really just no reason at all for those games not to be ported over the Switch. The Switch can easily handle those games. Now, 5 to me, that's a little bit more of a mystery just because it might be a little bit more demanding, but even then, I think that it might eventually. Now, as for these listings, though, we, we've seen a lot of retailer listings in the past that were, again, just simply mistakes. So, I don't think that this is really evidence one way or the other, though I will say that I do hope that it's true. Let me know what you all think, though. Do you think that Persona will eventually head over to the Switch? And yeah, let me know how crazy you all think Atlas is for not already announcing this. I mean, come on, Atlas. What are you guys doing? Let's make this happen. Let's bring Persona over to the Nintendo Switch. Now, one story that really aggravated me last year was Activision's decision to basically absorb Vicarious Visions into Blizzard. I mean, Vicarious Visions is a very talented studio that worked on, I mean, they worked on the Crash Insane trilogy. They worked on Diablo 2 Resurrected, and then they also worked on that Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. Really, they did a great job with all these games, and then, well, Activision, they rewarded them by basically taking away their name and just turning them into some type of support studio, more or less. It's really just absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. And this whole decision, it, it just got worse today as it's now been revealed that their next planned game was originally Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4 remakes. Now, I'm not really a huge fan of Tony Hawk games or anything like that, but I did play these games growing up, and they were they were really good back in the day. And I know there's a lot of fans out there that would absolutely love to see these remakes happen. Unfortunately though, Tony Hawk himself said this in an interview. I wish I could say that we had something in the works, but Vicarious Visions kind of got disbanded. That was the plan. Even up until the release date of 1 plus 2, we were going 3 plus 4. And then Vicarious got absorbed and they were looking for other developers and then it was over. So there you have it. Because Vicarious Visions is no more, that would mean that there's no more Tony Hawk remakes for the time being. What I kind of hope happens here though, is that once Microsoft completes the Activision Blizzard acquisition, I, I really hope that they consider reviving Vicarious Visions once again. Take them away from Blizzard, make them their own team once again, that way they can make more of these remakes in the future, or really whatever games that they want. I really thought that this was a great team, and I, I just find it ridiculous as to what Activision did to them, and I do hope that fans, they let Xbox know that. And maybe we could see them return in the future once again. Speaking of Xbox though, let's go and talk about Xbox Game Pass because they just revealed five more games that we'll be releasing over the next 10 days. And like I said before, there's actually some pretty interesting titles in this lineup. As you can see here, this includes Shadowrun, Naraka Blade Point, Far Cry 5, FIFA 22, and then Total War Three Kingdoms. You can see above their pictures on which platforms they're releasing for, but this is actually a pretty good lineup here. For all those fans out there asking for more AAA games, you do have Far Cry 5 here, and this is actually the second big game in a row that Ubisoft is releasing into Game Pass. Earlier this month, they also released Assassin's Creed Origins into Game Pass alongside that 60 frames per second update. Definitely go check that out if you haven't already. But Ubisoft this year, they really have been pushing hard into Game Pass. In fact, they also launched Rainbow Six Extraction Day 1 into Xbox Game Pass earlier this year. So that's a good sign moving forward, as this could mean that Ubisoft will be looking to release more of their games into Game Pass moving forward. Nonetheless, though, Far Cry 5, this is a really good open world game. A lot of people would even consider it to be one of the better open world games out there available. And even though it's a little bit older now, it's, a, it's still a good looking game. So definitely check it out when it releases into Game Pass on July 1st. Shadowrun though, this is another highlight here, and a lot of people they view this series as one of the better CRPGs out there. These games have quite the fan following on PC specifically, but it's nice to see these games come over to console and directly into Xbox Game Pass day one. And the really cool part here is that it actually launches today, so yeah that's right, you can play through this entire series right now on console thanks to Game Pass. Total War Three Kingdoms, this is also available today as well, though this is actually for PC Game Pass. Total War is actually a very popular series on PC, so that's a nice inclusion here, as is FIFA 22. 
Again, this is another highly popular franchise. I know that sports games, they don't always get a ton of recognition from hardcore gamers online and just all that hype, but without a doubt, they do still remain very, very popular, so this is actually a sneaky big inclusion here when it comes to the service on June 23rd. As for Narok Blade Point, I'm not really sold on this game myself, per se. It's like this hack and slash battle rail type of game. It's actually been available on PC for quite some time, but if you are interested in this type of game, it is coming to Game Pass day one on June 23rd as well. And that is one of the great things about Game Pass because, well, you get to try it out for yourself without any kind of worries about reviews or anything like that. Overall, though, I think that this was a really solid month with games like Assassin's Creed Origins, with, again, that 60 frames per second update, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, that launched directly into Game Pass earlier this month, as well as Omori, which is one of the better turn-based RPGs released in recent years. Definitely don't miss that one. And now, all these revealed inclusions today. Xbox Game Pass, I say it all the time, but you just gotta love it. Next up, though, we need to talk about PlayStation and the possibility of another state of play for June once again. Now, we've actually talked about this before, but rumors continue to swirl that this very much could be a thing. This time, though, this is coming from the increasingly popular Tom Henderson. Now, he's kind of one of those insiders that are the golden standard, as you might say. He's been very accurate with a lot of his leaks, and it, I mean, it's quite clear that he has legitimate sources. Now here, it does seem like he's just kind of speculating though, and even if he's been reliable in the past, you should still always kind of take this stuff as nothing more than speculation or rumors. It's always important to keep in mind that nothing is confirmed, but let's go and take a look at as to exactly what he had to say. Evidence of state of play next week. Gran Turismo producer says an update on the game next week. Jason Schreier says God of War Ragnarok release date later this month. Sony is set to reveal hardware next week. He then continues on to say that Sony never gives out state of play dates and is very secretive with events. So like always, it's putting pieces of the puzzle together to see when, if, there'll be such an event. I'll publish the hardware stuff this week if I get the all clear. So, like I said before, it appears he's more or less speculating here. But, he did say earlier this month that all this kind of lines up with the possibility that maybe a PlayStation State of Play could happen at the end of June. It does seem like that there's a lot of possible announcements that could be made next week, and, you know, that could line up with some type of showcase. And actually about that, 9-1 Mobile's posted an exclusive article revealing some new Sony hardware being gaming headsets. As you can see here, they say, here's your first look at Sony's upcoming Endzone H series headphones. Apparently, this series of headphones will include three different models, all of which will have 360 spatial sound for gaming, and it appears to be more premium headphones than what they currently have on the market available for the PlayStation 5. The aesthetic design also kind of fits in with the PlayStation 5, but the reason that this is just so interesting is because, again, it lines up with what Tom Henderson has been claiming all along, that Sony is looking to reveal new hardware sometime here soon, maybe as early as the end of June. This does include the premium PlayStation DualSense controller that he leaked last week. Now, possibly these headphones as well, and now we're also hearing about some new monitors on top of that. So, that's a lot of potential announcements here, so... Again, maybe all of this could potentially be pointing towards some type of an event at the end of June. At the same time, though, I, I don't want to get Joel's hopes up too much here because there's also a very real possibility that Sony will just reveal this stuff in a blog post or something like that. That can't necessarily be ruled out either because they've revealed a lot of stuff in the past in a blog post, including the PlayStation 5 itself, if I'm remembering correctly. So I, I think it's just kind of one of those wait and see things, but let me know in the comments below. Do you think we'll see another state of play in June or not? Let's go take a look at the poll of the day though, where I asked you all on whether or not you still believe there will be a general Nintendo Direct in June. Yeah, this is just yet another one of those rumors that's really been making waves as of recent, but the further that we've gotten into this month, the more doubt I've seen from the community. And that actually reflects on the results of this poll. As you can see here, most of you all are skeptical with 53% of you saying no, while 37% of you said yes. So yeah, it does seem like most of you all have seemingly given up hope here, though I will say that I have not. I might be wrong about this one, but uh, yeah, I still do remain optimistic here. Nintendo's just always done a really good job at having these big showcases in June, and we still need more information on some of their upcoming lineup. So. Just because of their past history, I, I, I do remain hopeful here. I might die on this hill, but I guess we'll see sometime here soon enough. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, 
Don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.